Utopia tonight. Hey guys, how hey, are how you? Are you? Good, how are you, man? I'm okay. I'm okay. I hope I can live up to that build up. Wow. Yeah, that was a good dude. You are you are like literally one of my every movie that I've seen you in, you you completely steal the show. I don't even know if it's intentional, but it's just it's it's crazy, man. It's just the camera's drawn to you. You have the best lines. <laughs> like it's just it's well, amazing. You know what? To borrow from the uh, the Italian legend Sinatra, you know, with lyrics like that, even a minor bird could have a hit. You know, yeah. they uh, they write some <laughs> terrific stuff. Uh, uh, I think I said that to David Milch because I used to do a lot of stuff, you know, for the Bochco, uh when when Bochco was, you know, the guy in television back right. in the eighties, nineties, and even into this century. You know, I mean, we they used me a lot, and they were they just wrote the best stuff. So. Uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's good to hear that. And uh, did I try to purposely do it? I don't know. I mean, uh, I always think of myself as a you know. Although you know what, I'm thinking now in terms of team sports because I played a lot of sports. Uh, I actually was not a left guard. You know, one of those unsung guys. I was a I was a wide receiver and a running back. So I guess I was oh, sort wow. of a glamour oh, wow. guy in my younger days. So yeah, I guess yeah. as an actor, I uh, I like the spotlight a little bit also. But uh, oh god. Yeah. That anyway. makes so much sense because it's yeah, just, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so, it's so good. I had, when I, when I said that you were going to be on the show, cause we, we were going to be on last week or whatever. I got so many messages from people picking their favorite scenes and sending me clips. Like I hadn't seen them before. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, yeah, I know yeah, this is so yeah. good. And then I there was, I, I mean, I want to cover all, I want to cover your entire career and I want to talk to you about what you've been doing with sure. the pandemic and stuff too. Sure. But there's sure. one thing I didn't know you did, because I know you did voiceover work and the Batman, the animated series is one of my favorite shows as a kid, but I didn't know you did a lot of video games too. You know, I did a few and I guess the most prominent is uh, Mafia 1 and 2. Yeah. Which uh, has really been a, you know, a good one. I think we did that a few years ago and uh, it was actually... Um, it took a while to do it because uh, I think one of the reasons it came out of the Czech Republic and uh, oh, wow. they, it, it, it was some really good stuff. My friend Rick Pasqualini and I were the sort of main guys on that. And okay. uh, there was a little they had a little problem sometimes, you know, drawing the right kind of look for the mob guys. They were good, but it took a while. So uh, so we worked at that a while. And uh, mm. that's boy, it's amazing. You know, I. Uh, a lot of people, I get you know letters. I do some of these uh, cameo celebrity things, and that is, uh, along with Batman, uh, uh, very uh, popular. People love that. Uh, they ask me to uh, do lines from it sometimes, and you know you don't uh, remember everything as an actor. Right. So sometimes I have to go back and check and see some of the things I've said. But uh, yeah, that was good. And of course, Batman has been uh, the character of Bullock. That that's an award winning. Uh, animation series they really stayed very true to the the great noir look from the batman comics you know yes uh, absolutely adam, with all due respect to adam west and the and the other one which was <laughs> which was really campy and great too i mean you know do you have a favorite I mean, batman i feel like every generation has their batman I, who's your who's your batman Is oh you mean uh, of the, in the movie guys huh? yeah 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 um I, I think Kilmer was good, wasn't he? I, I, you know, I'm not really a devotee of the movies. Oh, I hate, of that of that series. I hate to say it, but uh, George Clooney's a bit of a, you know, somewhat of a buddy, and Georgie yeah. was good, I guess. But uh, who do you like? I don't know. I'm not sure who. Uh, I got. I don't know I, I, I'm a Michael Keaton because that was the the first two. Oh movies. yeah, Michael epic yeah. with him in it. I think that's my when I was a kid. It was Michael Keaton, and I like Christian Bale in the new ones, but. In my heart of hearts, it's Michael Keaton. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Christian Bale yeah. did a great job too. He he nailed it for a while. What does he not do a great job in? You know, he is my, a guy it's just oh yeah, amazing. I mean, you know, you know, it's amazing. I was I was telling that to someone this morning. We're having lunch or mm. uh, late breakfast. Uh, you know, the the British actors. Well, he's not British, I guess. He's he's Australian, is he not? 
Yes, I think yes. so. I think, but but the British Australian, you know, the 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 UK actors, if oh, you will, he, yeah, British, in the yeah, old yeah, days, yeah. in the old days, as great as they were, and like the big four or five were Olivier Gilgood, Richardson, Redgrave. I'm dating myself now, but no, I know, yeah, and, but but you know, but those guys, as great as they were, they usually didn't come off the British thing. These guys, I mean, you think they're from, uh, you know, from Hoboken or wherever. They they really do. I mean, Bale is. Amazing, yeah. you know, and uh, some of the other guys, even uh, who is it? Uh, um, it's a Benedict. difficult name, ben, uh, that Cumberbatch. Ben, ben, you know, I, exactly. I, yeah. saw, I saw your face contorting when you were trying to say his yeah. name, and I'm like, I know who he means. And you know who I meant, right? Yeah. The only thing, the only thing he and I have, uh, we have the same initials, I guess. Me, him, and <laughs> Benedict, and Billy Crystal, and Bobby. Yeah, uh, Billy, of oh, course. God. We've done so much stuff together. You know, he's so he's been great. Yeah. There's so many great memes online of Benedict Cum or people messing up Benedict Cumberbatch's yeah. name. My friends and I, we used to be like Bumble Dick Humpty Fuck. You know what I mean? Like what, <laughs> whatever it was. Uh, Bumble Dick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. Well, I remember when Engelbert Humperdinck was a cool name, but now, yes. uh, yeah, dude, he yeah, got. I mean, I mean, he, yeah. He's he's got his he like Engelbert Humperdinck oddly enough. So here's a weird thing. I did a, a video, um, you know the song Quando, right? Quando Quando. Yeah, yeah. So I sure, was sure. I was coming back late from a, a comedy gig and I was starving and I was trying to I was like flying down the road trying to make those it. To are, a those are, those are not mutually exclusive, right? Oh, they are. I guess. <laughs> yeah, oh, you do yeah. you. You do a lot of stand up, right? I do. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. before the pandemic hit, I was um was on huh. on the road all the time all over the country. Yeah, yeah, right. Um so I was I was coming home or whatever and I was trying to make it to a Wendy's before they closed cuz it was like getting to that <laughs> 2 a.m. mark and right. uh Quando came on and I recorded myself like mimicking that as I was driving to Wendy's. So I I posted it and it kind of went viral for a bit and I tried to get his attention and tag him in it and he was just like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. he didn't get, but he's on Instagram and stuff. He's got uh, Engelbert Humperdinck is like you know uh, yeah. got his own. Is that the know. one that goes peso peso cuanto cuanto? Cu yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was yeah. like, I don't care for that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and it's you're right. The British guys are killing it, man. They're in all the Marvel movies. Tom Holland, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Um, God, I'm trying to think of who else, but they just knock it out of the park, and they're all doing our accents. They're doing New York accents. <laughs> they're not. They're not like you know. They nail it. I think I, oh, oh, there, oh, there you, are. you are. Okay. Oh, did I lose you? Uh, no, no, yeah. now we're good. Yeah, now we're oh, okay. good. Yeah. yeah, I was saying they nail those New York accents, too. They're not even doing it. They're, not, they're just coming to our country, <laughs> stealing all yeah. our New York acting jobs. But they're great. They they are good. They We, we can't yeah. we can't argue with it. You know, you know, there was always the, uh, uh, and I'm not one to, because uh, I kind of started at Strasbourg, actually, my you know real i'm not a real pure method guy i do use it like i guess we all sort of use facets of it but uh right these, uh, you know and they would always knock the brits as being more external but they're they're marvelous i mean yeah you know uh, is that we, ain't where, where we, we ain't bad either though yeah no we're pretty good we can hold we our got, own we got some good actors here too. yeah exactly i'm talking to one right now uh do we so where did where did you start did you start did you did you go to school for it or did you just start naturally? you know you know i think uh i think i was part of the explosion of italian american actors you know born around world war ii slightly after and uh that kind of uh, had a sort of feeling for the arts and uh we all a lot of us kind of you know just naturally moved into it i didn't get into it until i was in my late 20s i got out of school had a degree wow. in business was in a textile industry and actually uh and i'm thinking of putting a one-man show together and uh oh, yeah, starting off that. with how i became an actor and the truth of it is is two words quail hunting now you i didn't shoot dan <laughs> i didn't i didn't shoot the vice presidential candidate although <laughs> we won't do that but this was q u a i l uh, okay. What happened was I, I was at a sales meeting and we had a choice of quail hunting or golfing. I'd become an avid golfer, but back then I didn't golf. So I thought quail hunting might be fun. I went with one of the good old boys. This was down in the Carolinas. The, the, uh, the company was in the Carolinas and I couldn't hit a goddamn quail all day. And he's going, <laughs> he's going you, 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 got, we can curse on this thing too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. You goddamn Yankee boys can't shoot worth the shit. I go shut up, or I'm gonna shoot you. Uh, <laughs> his name was 
His name was Braxton Speedy Lewis. So at the end of the day, John, uh -huh. I was so frustrated. I shot six quail on the ground. Decidedly not what you do. So that, that night, that night, I know, they gave me the Audubon Society Award. And they tried to roast me, and I kind of topped, you know, all these hillbillies. And oh. I wound up, I wound up coming. Bob Levinson, who was the chairman of the board of this company, Duplan, that I worked with, yeah. he's an impressive guy. He's like a Jewish wasp. And, I, and uh, <laughs> I, he, he had his limo. He lived up on, I think he was married to one of the Lehman Brothers' daughters. And he was okay. kind of an impressive guy. And I'm in the back of his limo, and he says, Costanzo, you're very funny. Have you ever thought about showbiz? And I go, I guess you see my sales figures, Mr. Levinson. Of course, he was too busy manipulating <laughs> the stock to, to do that. But he gave me that idea. And a couple of days later, I was going home to my mom's, I think, to get some pasta, get my laundry done. And, you know, uh, there was somebody had a thing from the new school, Strasbourg Institute. And I got off the train two stops later. I went over there, you know, like on a whim. And the, the artistic director said, you're a good type, $150. And I went. All right, I blow that on every Saturday at Aqueduct, so let me do that. <laughs> I I started the class, you know, women who wouldn't even look at me were saying, would you care to come up to my loft and rehearse Antigone? You know, and I go, yeah, fuck, <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, that sounds good, you know. So anyway, <laughs> that's kind of how it started, and uh, wow. I sort of realized wow. it was my thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it just felt right, and um, yeah, so I started studying there and started doing, you know, little off-Broadway stuff, then started landing some commercials. And even though I'm sort of known as a New York actor, clearly uh, yeah. I uh, yeah. I got cast from a commercial to come out here to do Alice, the show that was popular back in the late 70s. I remember Alice, yeah. And yeah, and I came out here and really literally never went back. I stayed here and uh, worked here. I would go to New York like I did NYPD Blue the first yeah. season. I went back to New York and, and all, but essentially... Uh, that was it. I never looked back. I fell in love with California, to be honest. A lot of people said, you're not going to like it here, but I did like it. You know, wound up a lot of my friends transplanted New Yorkers and all. And yeah. uh, I stayed. So, uh, yeah, I, I, you're, you're in Jersey, but you've been out here, obviously. You know. Yeah, I lived, yeah. Out, I lived out in California for two years. And um, when I was I was born in Brooklyn um, and then like raised primarily in like in New Jersey or whatever. But we always went back to Brooklyn. But for a little while... Where we in Brooklyn were you from? Where in Brooklyn? Um, I was in Borough Park, 40th Street. Okay, in the 40s. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, yeah, and my I family was, still uh, lives there. Yeah. 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 I, li I live in, you know, Our Lady of Sopranoville there, Gravesend, Bensonhurst, you know. Oh, I know. It's, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that's changed now, though. But, oh, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, so many of the characters that I play, I really draw from. Growing up, you know, I mean, it was such a theatrical, you know, you're Italian, I'm sure, you yeah. know. I mean, yeah. ma many times I go, oh, that's Paulie Lafayette, that's Joe Malone, that's, I can hear their voice, you know. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, uh, we had a guy. I mean, we, I mean, there were so many people. I mean, it, it's crazy. We had a guy named Bagels, we had Basil, we had everybody yeah, had a nickname, they stand on the corner. Sure. And you're right. The cat, I mean, my, my dad's uh, parents, my grandparents had uh, nine children and then they had kids wow. and then they, so it's just, it's this huge, my dad's family's huge and everybody's mm -hmm. buried in the same place. Uh, everybody's, sure. everybody's, and you know, what's crazy is like whenever there's a funeral or a wedding, half the people that are there, each one has somehow stolen from the other at some point in their lives. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm yeah. like, oh, how do you know that one? Oh, well, your father, when he was younger, he stole from my <laughs> mother who took the, and I'm just like, and you still yeah. talk to each other, but that's all they have, you know? Oh, you know? it was, oh my God. The funeral it's stories. <laughs> I remember once, you know, it, it, it's a sort of a tragic comic thing. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the, the great, the first terrible things that happened in our family, my uncle Carlo, mother's brother, who was a real Damon Runyon character. He was like Sergeant Bilko. I mean, this right. guy came home from World War II. He, he, he never made it to the front lines. He, he was in Louisiana. He built all the rubes down there. He came back with 30 grand in 1946. Wow. He had five wow. sisters. He gave each one of them six thousand dollars. He said, "Under no, under no circumstances, give it to me back." Within a within a year, he was broke in Brooklyn. He kept taking the money from them. <laughs> anyway, and and we looked we looked a little bit alike. And then right. tragically, tragically, when I was sixteen, and he, uh, ironically, he he was one of these guys that really never worked, and he got a job 
with Hemingway Trucking, where he didn't do anything. You know, some yeah. mob guy got him a job, and he was uh, unfortunately crushed in by a by a truck, and we were all devastated. It was Holy Good Friday, shit. and it was terrible. But one of the things I remember is we were everyone was crying forever, and uh, he was beloved. And mm -hmm. uh, at one point, everyone stopped crying for a while, and I'm 16, and my brother's 13, and my cousin Paulie, and we go, thank goodness. And all of a sudden, they started again. And it was funny that the oldest sister, my Aunt Tessie, and then my mother, they in, in, in descending order of their age, they sort of picked up a cue, and then they would cry. And then Aunt Lula would start. And I'm going, <laughs> this is more than a coincidence. Oh, Yeah. Oh, I mean, so God. many, oh, you know, the, you know the, it, and the weddings and the whole, yeah. I mean, great. I, it, it, there's a reason those funerals are three days long because they don't, I mean, you know, there's time to be, I feel like there's a moment during all of those where you're obviously sad, everyone's very morose, and then the next two days are like, hey, is, yeah. is Bobby coming? Is Tony, you know, who's coming? And it's just people fucking piling in from the yeah, neighborhood. No. Don't die on a Thursday. We've got to lay you out Thursday, Friday, <laughs> then we got to we got to pay extra dollars. You can't bury on a Sunday, then you got to stay five days. It's too yeah. much. Then you start yep. resenting yep. the dead. You die on no, but now they've changed. They've become much more civil now and uh, humane. <laughs> they, now they lay you out for one day. They're still not into the uh, yeah. uh, into cremation yet. The, the, the serious Italians, but uh, yeah, oh, dude, I remember yeah. we uh, some of my family. We, the burial plot is out for some reason. I mean, you die. You know, you die in Brooklyn. You go to the funeral home that's right on the corner of 40th Street, <laughs> up past Apollo's, and then uh, yeah. yeah. You fuck, and then, but they're burial plots in Long Island. So I, when I was a kid, I remember those long fucking rides. Yeah, all yeah. The way. I thought everybody did that though. Like, were you shocked yeah, that yeah, when yeah, people, yeah. <laughs> when somebody died, I'm like, oh, you're gonna and go they, limo yeah. three hours? Somebody, and like, oh. somebody's got to, somebody's got to stay home, and one aunt that, or a neighbor. Has I lost you for a minute there. You you were saying an aunt, uh, was it one aunt has to stay oh, back. Oh, yeah, there's always somebody back. who has to stay back and, you know, make the food or a neighbor yeah. or, you know, and then, yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. know. It's it's great. I remember, uh, not, to, not to get keep getting too modeled, but um, <laughs> one one funeral or whatever, it was my grandmother's funeral. And she was like the major, you know, matriarch of the family. So everybody got sure. together. Yeah. And uh, I'm there with all my uncles. And at that point, my parents had divorced. So I'm there, obviously, on a week, you know, whatever it is. I'm with my dad. My dad's off doing God knows what. I'm with one of my uncles and there's a crowd outside and like like a fucking movie scene. One of my my aunt's husbands, so it's not even he's not even blood, you know what I mean? So this guy's on right. thin fucking ice as it is, says something yeah. shitty to my oh, uncle's ex wife. Not even his wife, like oh. he he doesn't even like this woman anymore, right? <laughs> but, he, but he fucking said something shitty to her. And then they started a fight in the street. And they're oh. old, you know, there were older men at the time. And I'm just sitting with one of my uncles, and he just goes to me, you know, you get to go home after this. I gotta live here. And I'm just because <laughs> it was like thunder, lightning, and my uncle just punched my other uncle in the face. Boom. I was yeah, it was yeah. hilarious. And that was it. And I and I but as yeah, a kid, yeah. I was like, this is fucking great. <laughs> I, didn't, I was like, yeah, Pleasure. I was like, this is hilarious. There's, you're, there's you're, so you're, many you're. stories. Your comedy chops were being formed, uh, whether you knew it or not. That was Ex it. exactly, was exactly. And yeah. my, and you know, and there's just, uh, I got to tell you another story. So my dad was like, my dad's just notorious. He's, he's, you know, he's in his seventies now, and he's essentially retired from all the con artist shit he did. Uh, but you know, but that's why they got divorced. He was one of those guys. You know what I mean? I'm sure you know who I'm talking. Like the kind of guy. Yeah, he was like my uncle, my uncle Piccolo, Uncle Carlo, who I just yeah. called his brother. Piccolo Pete, one of the great Damon Runyon characters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he could, and he could talk it to anybody and to anything, and everybody loved him, no wow. matter how you know, whatever. So, yeah. but it won't. But my my dad's dad, my grandpa Tony, um, he he would he just didn't like that kind of shit. He was a respectable guy, worked for the mob, but still a respectable. You know what I mean? Like, didn't care for the. Oh, your 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 grandfather worked for the mob. He was a yeah. He was like an enforcer for the mob, so he'd go knocking on Whoa. the doors to yeah. Um, which is another long story, which is how my aunt met my uncle. It's a crazy story. Anyway, oh. so um, the whole, the whole, so, but anyway, my dad was, my dad and my mom is before I was born. This is like a story that everybody tells. A guy broke into their house and stole the VCR. That's how far back that goes and started running with it. My dad caught him and starts running after him. So there's a guy running with a VCR and my dad running after the guy. My grandpa Tony thinks immediately my dad did something to fuck up. So he starts running yeah. after my father and other three of them are running <laughs> down the street. No idea why. And one of my dad's brothers goes, this is it. 
dad's finally going to beat the shit out of Johnny Boy. <laughs> Like it's just like that was it. So it's just. But that's funny enough. that your your grandpa was sort of a a different kind of guy than your father. But he was yes. he yeah. was a mob guy. Your dad wasn't really a mob guy. He was more of a con guy. Or, yeah, guess, exactly. Yeah. And it's weird yeah. that they didn't they didn't see eye to eye on oh, that I had, shit. Uh, my my uncle Pete. What uh, just quick story? Great character. Yeah. He was uh, my auntie Lane, who Piccolo married. Uh, she she was like from Pennsylvania, and she was she. She was the sweetest woman in the world, but think Gene Stapleton. That was Andy okay. Lane. Yeah. And Peter, she used to call him Peter. <laughs> and at the end of the year, no matter what carousing and gambling and drinking he did, he mm-hmm. brought home a cheesecake from the Turf restaurant, which was the best cheesecake back in the day. Uh-huh. This was better. Uh-huh. Junior's is famous, of course, in right. Brooklyn, but, uh, but the Turf, the best. And that would absolve uh-huh. him for the year. That cheesecake would give him would give him like unlimited f- fucking around for the year. It was great. That was, uh, that was a, a very good gift. <laughs> well, that's fucking that gave, amazing. That gave him a pass for the year. Oh, Peter, you brought the cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. You love And that. I would look at my brother and I go, here we go again. You know, anyway. So, um, so one of the questions I was going to ask you is all these characters. So like, are each of the characters that you do in a film or in a movie drawn from these like the construction worker character in, in Billy Crystal's and City Slickers. Yeah, and- a little bit. I think I don't I don't think specifically the one, you know, the, you know, I think I guess of all the things I've done, that has gotten me the most notoriety, that uh, construction guy. For some reason that hit with a lot of people and uh yeah. it's become yeah. Uh, some yeah, really memorable. Um yeah, I didn't I didn't sort of label that particularly <laughs> after anybody. It was just my general feeling of seeing those kind of guys and then, you mm-hmm. know, just you know trying to find the uh well it's very funny the, those guys uh, low gans and babalu mandel wrote that those guys are terrific yeah. they were they were like you know proteges of gary marshall back in the day and then they went on to do you know great stuff i think they wrote that script i guess billy along with billy and uh, yeah uh yeah that was great that that uh uh, it's so much fun to do that scene. Oh, oh God! It, it's it's just, just it's just just instantly funny. I mean, it's just it's a classic scene. Uh, and then so when you moved to the West Coast, though, did you still keep in touch with the East Coast guys, the acting buddies you had, and the friends, or did you kind of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did keep in touch with them. Then some of them slowly but surely came out here. You know, oh. uh, my buddy John Capadici became a great friend. Joey Pants, Joey Pantoliano, Joey who. Pantoliano. Uh, Nice. Yeah, I met Joe. Actually, I met Annie, my wife, who has been my wife forever. Mm-hmm. I always kid Joey, you little bastard. That's the only good thing you did. I met her at a Valentine's. <laughs> Day. I met her at a Valentine's Day party at Joey's house in the late seventies. Right. When I first came out here, and uh, she said, "Give Costanzo my number." And Joey said, "That asshole," you know, because Joey and I always <laughs> we always had that sort of friendly shit going on. Yeah. He wanted Andy Andy to meet another actor friend of his. And mm-hmm. I said, that with the two of them, you would have needed a ventriloquist to start a conversation. So, uh, <laughs> but she, she and I, and I, I always tell Joey, thank, thank you for Annie, Joey, you know? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So a lot of the guys came out here and, uh, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, Bobby Moresco's a good friend, uh, Bobby yeah. who wrote yeah. Crash. Right. From, and Bobby's so talented. And we started when we first came out here, actually Bobby did, he had, this concept in New York, we, we, he called it the actor's gym. And a lot of us got involved with it. And then when Bobby went back to New York, when things weren't going well for him, mm-hmm. uh, we, we sort of, you know, put it on the back burner and then Bobby came out here and he's still doing it. And of course he's done so well, you know, he wrote yeah. crash with uh, Haggis and yeah. He's amazing. Still, he's still doing a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So we, you know, a lot of the guys of who else, uh, Kenny Lerner, who's a good friend, uh, oh. Kenny's from Brooklyn. You know, it right. turned out a lot of a lot of us we play poker together, and a lot of us grew up within a few miles of each other. Uh, Lou Kolick, who wrote uh, Ghosts of Mississippi and October oh, Sky, wow. Louis October grew up Sky, in Coney so Island. fucking good, yeah. yeah, yeah, so good. He almost won the Humanities Award uh, for the Writers Guild for that. Wow, Kenny Learner, wow. my friend Phil Messina. You know, one of the movies I'm most proud of is called With Friends Like These. Yeah, great and movie. I got, to play, I got to play. Thank you. I'm glad you saw that. I got yeah, to play beautiful. the lead that. I'm not sure exactly what happened. There's a lot of different stories, but it never got theatrical release. My yeah. buddy Phil Messina, who's from uh, Sheeps of Bay, we got to know each other out here. He wrote and directed it, and he, he sort of based it on my life. You know, the idea of an actor who's out here 
who, uh, you know, who's not doing blow and going up to the Playboy Mansion. Damn it, why didn't I? But, you know, the guys who start a family and, you know, uh, trying to make your, your medical every year and all that, the regular guy. And that, uh, I remember Travolta saying, I love that movie. I thought it was one of the better, real good inside looks. He said, I, yeah. I, think, it was, I think it was more of a, of a real look at the industry from that point of view than even like Get Shorty, which he was in, which was a nice compliment. Yeah, It was. And I thought about that uh, when I first moved out to L.A. because I saw it when I was younger and I had the same feeling, which was like, I thought I would, I just missed it in the theater. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, how the fuck yeah. did I miss this movie? It's so fucking good. Yeah. And then yeah. when I was doing some research on you before this, I realized it never made it into the movie. I was going to ask you, like, no one knows why, huh? Uh, there was some legal bullshit and whatever, and uh, and, you know, uh, I that's it. Penny Marshall produced it, yeah. My dad, you know, my dad was in that movie. My dad would play my father in the movie, came out here. My mother passed away before him, and he came out here, stayed with us for a while, right? I never pushed it, but he wound up, uh, he did a couple of commercials, and uh. He wound up in this. I remember Penny Marshall saying, uh, you think your father could play you if you fought the Barbie? And I go, no, we'll get, the, you know, we'll get Sir John Gilgood to play my dad. But he, he you know, he was, he was amazing. And yeah, uh, and he I didn't did know he was your dad. Yeah. He, you know, he looked like Jimmy Durant. He had no real, he couldn't hear very well, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, he, he, he was just so natural, I guess. And he did a few things and, you know, when he when he passed away out here, I said, Dad, we got plenty of money now to fly you back home. And we, wow. and he got buried in Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, which is that, you know, yeah. when, he yeah. was, when he was a kid, he ran around it and then he wound wow. up in it, you know, which. Uh, yeah. That's but awesome. that was uh, that was an awesome story. Yeah. 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 I did not know that. That makes so much more sense now that I'm thinking about looking back that that was your dad because he played it perfectly. Yeah. 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 I, I had yeah. no idea. Did you? Did yeah. you? Was that? Did that mean a lot to you to get to do that kind of work with him? Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. That whole movie. I mean, uh, David Strathairn, who worked in that. You know, who's such a great actor, so modest and all, and you know, had Amy Madigan playing my wife. I mean, it was yeah. such a, a a good film, and it, yeah, it really deserved a better. Uh, it deserved to be in the theaters. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe we'll do, we should we I don't know if you have the uh, ability to do it, but we should do a uh, like a watch thing like online. Like, you know, you can do like you can stream something online and have a watch party. Everybody could watch the film. People have never seen it before. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll talk to Phil about that because Phil is trying to revive it. It's been on Amazon. It's got a few hits, a yeah. number of hits on Amazon and all that. But yeah. Good. Yeah, I know. It was. Uh, oh, that was like such a thrill you doing that. I mean, it was just so much fun. Gosh. Yeah. And so how have you been holding up during the pandemic and stuff? Are you guys like, I'm okay. You- I'm okay. I'm, you know, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm nice. I wash my hands more than punches pilot at Christ trial. Oh my God. <laughs> but uh, that's good though. That, that's kind of a Catholic in- esoteric reference. Yeah. Um, but we're all good. My wife and um, I'm doing, um, I, I did work a few weeks ago on a thing called Tacoma FD which okay. is a very cool show. You know, the guys who uh, who did, uh, what is it, Space Troopers? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, Starship Troopers? Yeah. Even? Or, yeah. What, what, what is it? Is it Starship Troopers or is it? Um, no, not Star Troopers. I think it's called. Uh, S- Super Troopers. Uh, Super Troopers. Thank Got you. Got it. They yep. did a couple. Yep. They're really cool guys. As a matter of fact, Joey Pants <laughs> plays the guy's father. He's the fire commissioner. Oh, so nice. we, like I said, I'd love to get you in an episode together. So, but I did one, uh, which was a lot of fun. I played a, a guy on the pizzeria with a young trophy wife who got, you know, pissed at them. It was a comedy. Very funny. Nice. And also now I'm doing a really, a play I've always loved the, uh, Eugene O'Neill one act play Yui, which, oh, uh, wow. I saw Pacino do it. Uh, I saw uh, not Pacino. Pacino did do it, but I saw mm. Gazzara do it when I was a young actor before I came out here, and I loved that play. So this fellow Richard Kenyon, who's a Shakespearean guy from Canada, is directing a stage reading of it. Um, wow. I'm going to try to be mostly off book. We're going to do it in late April. We're going to pre-record it so we don't have trouble like this when you zoom it, you know. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> you know we're going to and we, we're going to hopefully it'll be edited well and we're going to stream it. We wow. may eventually do a movie of it, but I'll, uh, you know, you'll you'll know or I'll let you know, and then yeah. it'll be on a stream. We're not sure what streaming service, but 
I'm getting a real kick out of doing that. I, I love it. It's a, I think it's based on O'Neill's son, J the oldest son, who was kind of a near the well mm -hmm. and uh, a drinker and a gambler. And this character I play, is, uh, it's an old hotel, 1928. It's kind of a flea bag hotel. Right. And he's right. a drinker and he's come off a drunk. And the, the night clerk who lived, who was there before is Yui. Yui is, is gone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I talk about him. And during the course of the play, I realize what a great friend he was and how, how much he meant to me. And this other night clerk who I'm telling it to is kind of, you know, sort of dead from the neck up. And, uh, but as the play un unfolds, he, he responds to me a little more, and you get the feeling that he's going to become my new Yui when the play ends. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Nice. Eugene O'Neill, you know, just. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah, send it, uh, um, you yeah. know, whatever you got from it. Pl well, yeah. I'll plug it. I'll push it out there, too, yeah. and make sure people come. Yeah, yeah. Watch oh, stuff. great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's good, though. I mean, at least it sounds like you've at least been keeping busy during all this. This is what I've been doing during yeah, this. Yeah, a little bit of that. You've been doing, you've been doing your stand. Do you know Jimmy DelVal? Do you know Jimmy DelVal? I don't think so. No, is he out yeah, over he here? Does. He does stand up, and uh, he did a thing called Forget About It, where he produced it. I played his dad. Oh, I don't know how nice. we, we shot a few episodes, but he does a lot of stand up. He does a lot of cruises, though. Oh, and, okay, okay. Uh, so he's very fine. I thought you might know him, Jimmy. Uh, yeah. So no, I have to look him up. No, I do. I do a lot yeah. of the club circuit in New York and stuff like that on the East Coast or whatever. And then I'll go to the Midwest and then Cal like I usually start. Either I'll start on the West Coast and come back home, or I'll start here and then go back out if I'm doing some stuff out in LA. So, so you're, yeah. When you come out here, let me know. I'll come, uh, I'll you come and see. You. Hopefully, that'll happen again. You know where you guys can start. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. I hope so. I really do hope so. I mean, we were, we were, I was out in LA before the pandemic hit and I had a, um, this isn't about me, but I had a, <laughs> I had a, uh, a short right. film. I had a short film that I did on Amazon and we literally, I went over to the uh, Henson company because the film features a puppet. It's about uh, mm -hmm. somebody who's the main character is dealing with depression and it manifests into this adorable little puppet that he calls Duppet. And so Duppet's on Amazon oh. prime and it's a short film and Henson caught, wind of it and then asked me to come out there to pitch it as a series i went out there pandemic hit so everything's who on caught, hold who, and who, who 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 caught wind of it to pitch it? Uh, jim, jim henson studios oh the henson studios okay yeah, yeah. wow yeah, Matt. Well, then yeah, you we, could revive it again after post pandemic hopefully. that's what we're you trying know? to do man we, we just had a uh, I, uh yeah yeah what do you say can you what can i i can see it on amazon prime then yeah absolutely yeah what's it called it's called Duppet, D U P P E T. I can send you the okay. link and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Me, yeah. So, um, so uh, yeah. So, I mean, other than that, it's been a weird pilot season. It hasn't been, uh, <laughs> you know, there hasn't been the traditional pilot season, which right. typically right. would be from mid January, as you know, to like, you know, maybe early April. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, even without the pandemic, though, that's changed somewhat. You know, now with the, streaming and the cable you know used to be more uh more structured you know yeah. particularly yeah. with the networks you know you would uh uh and you know i've done a few series although my my big joke is i just always miss the series the series regular thing by mr by <laughs> that much like don adams don adams say. yeah <laughs> i did you know i did charlie grace with mark Harmon, who's a, who's a peach of a guy and then after Charlie Grace, we got canceled after nine episodes. Mark does NCIS, you know. Oh so my God. I'm my always. God. And then uh, uh, after playing Joey's father on Friends, uh, I did I was... play Joey's father on Joey. Right. And, uh, and they were going to spit, they spun it off, and I, they were adding me as a regular, and then NBC canceled the scene. I was so, going to mention Friends, man, because you that that scene where you play where you play Joey's father yeah. on Friends, dude, is just brilliant. It's so good. That, that was that was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I got to have yeah Brenda Vaccaro and uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun doing that. Did you ever you, know? you and Matt LeBlanc had a good chemistry together though? Did you did you guys wind yeah. up staying closer? Did you, you know? well well we did you know I I played his father and Joey. They wrote, wrote a really good episode and uh, no, we didn't really stay close after that. I like Matt, but. Uh, Mm -hmm. I did try to pitch him the idea of being his father on uh, the one he. What is that series he's got? Uh, oh, uh, Monday, man! Uh, man uh, oh my God! Is it Man yeah. with a Plan or Man Without a Plan? Man or, with a, uh, was it Man with a Plan? Yeah, yeah. It was a, a pretty shitty title. I would, uh, <laughs> but uh, man, I don't know. You know, you run. The, I think but, uh, you're but, absolutely but I, but, right. 
I know. Uh, man yeah, with know. a plan. That was it. It's man with a plan. Man with a plan. Yeah, yeah but I, I I talked to Mar uh, uh, to my uh, Matt about that. He said you'd be really we you know you made too much of an impression. You'd be the last guy that we, you should play my father, even though you'd be great at it. They, right. I think Stacy Keach wound up doing it. That that ran for a while though. It ran for it a did. few years. I'm not sure if it's still on. I don't know. It did run for a while, and it's always weird to me because I feel like the sitcom thing. Everybody always says the sitcom is kind of dead or whatever it is, but like there there is a huge difference, like in the way like series like you know like just Mash and you know even the Dick Van Dyke Show back. They like that stuff holds up way better than I feel like the ones that come out now do. Yeah, I think you're absolutely yeah, the golden. Yeah, the, the golden age of sitcoms. I mean, I I for a while there, that's pretty much what I did. I I only did. Sitcoms, sitcoms for a while. Yeah. Then I started doing all the Bochco stuff, and I went into the one-hour stuff. But do you prefer yeah. the do you prefer the comedy element of it? You're so good at the comedy thing, or do you prefer the drama now? I like the comedy. I like the yeah. comedy. You know, uh, it, it's just uh, it's more immediate. The you know the reaction back, and you know it 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 didn't take me too long. I I, I sort of figured out that hybrid form of, right. of comedy, right. which is the three the multi camera where uh, you do have to punch it up. You know, it is sort of uh, set up, set up, joke, and then they come in a little closer with the joke and all. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, it, a lot of actors have trouble because the, there is an audience there uh, mm -hmm. on, on the multi-camera. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, you, you but you're really playing to the camera, not the audience. But, uh, right. you know, you get the feel of it and uh, and you and you sort of split the difference, I guess. But essentially, you know, you just... Uh, I can't even really articulate it, but you develop a, a, a rhythm in it as opposed to like when you're doing, a, let's say, a comedy, uh, you know, in front of just people without a camera, which is a, a little different, of course. Yeah. But yeah. You, you know, nope. it's, it's like everything else, you know, you just develop a, uh, a technique for it, you know? Right. Yeah, no, totally. And that's weird too, because like, even like, you know, uh, the right, like, like most of the time like you get somebody like a Matt LeBlanc or someone like that to do a sitcom. They've been in sitcoms before they've been in successful ones, but the problem is that the writers nowadays, which is a total knock on the generation coming up after me and mine to an extent too, is like, you get these people who write a situation comedy, but how can you write a situation comedy when you've never been in a fucking situation before? You know what I yeah. mean? Everybody's yeah. so geared to, online yeah. and whatever else is you don't have those you don't, you don't have that forced contact you had to have so how can anything remotely exciting well, or fun yeah or i mean you, you know what they say they're they're children of television so their experiences come from other television shows rather than yeah. from life experiences sometimes uh uh there's a problem there, there's talented writers today but I, I i would have to say you know we tend to all you know, favor our generation, whether it's athletes, writers, whatever. But yeah. uh, back in the day, the Mary Tyler Moore, uh, Jim Brooks, all those guys, Larry Gelbart, from oh, the yeah. Ash, those guys were just, Norman they Lear. were wordsmiths. They came out of the theater, you know, Danny Simon, you know, all yeah. a lot yeah. of, a lot of really good stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think nowadays, I mean, traditional Mike and Molly was pretty good, you know, because yeah. they were talented and you know, there's, there's people and it, it'll, it, it might come back again. I think. Have you seen Ted Lasso yet? You know what? I, I have it. I have the uh, move. I have the movie, but I haven't looked. It's good. huh? It's very good. It's very, very yeah. good. It's like one of the yeah. best shows that I've seen in a long time. And it's got that classic, you know, it's got that good writing style. It's the writing is perfect. Uh, comedy is like, Jason Sudeikis is in it. It's really, really good. Um, uh -huh. But did you have, so uh, like, were you able to transition? Like, cause like, I know like for me, like when I was doing some of the pandemic stuff, a lot of it's on tape now at your point yeah. in your career, do you have to do any of that? Or are you, are you like, I'm not, I'm not shooting a tape from home. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, do no, you I, to, do. I do. I do. I have to shoot it. Yeah. You know, to be That's honest, rough. I mean, a lot of people don't know who you are anymore. There's a lot of new casting directors and, uh, you right. know, they want to see you do their lines, not just send the tape in. So I do have to do that uh, uh, oftentimes. And uh, wow. I don't like it. I didn't, I never even liked it. I always liked, you know, even before the pandemic, uh, it's kind of started like that, where the producers don't show up, which yeah. I hate it, you know. Yep. I mean, because, yep. uh, because you know, you want them to, 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 you know, see you in the flesh where you're 
you, you yes. know, you, yes. I can do my thing too. I mean, uh, I've, I've, you know, I, uh, teach occasionally and I've told actors, I do it, you know, my way, you've got to find your own way to do it. You know, I, right. uh, I get self-deprecating depending on the role I'll kid around, you know, I'll be really, uh, you know, ultra serious, but. Do you improvise a lot or do you general, stick to the script? No, uh, I think you got to stick to the script. Most of these writers, you know, think it is like the Ten Commandments. It's real sacrosanct. But I, but you know, I, I've embellished a, a little. Depends who it is, you know. Yeah. You know, if you're dealing with a, a Jim Brooks or somebody on that level, I think you should, you know, say the words. But uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. And, but then you, that was great about Tacoma. Those guys were so open to improvisation and. Uh, Nice. You know, I mean, you know, sometimes you'll get a script like when I did Forget Paris with Billy Crystal, mm -hmm. I literally had one line and I had worked with Billy goes, Bobby, trust me, I'm going to make this into something. And he did. You know, we wow. we were able we, we had some freedom and we were able to, uh, uh, you know, to make the role into something, you know. Right. So, uh, I, uh, yeah. do you, are you still close? With, do you still talk to Billy? I haven't talked to Billy in a while, but uh, I, yeah, we like each other. I just you know, haven't been in touch with him. He's he's amazing. He's yeah. uh, he ne he like never misses. Like when he hosts a show or something, he's he's like a kind of bridge between the old school guys, you know, and the yeah the modern guys. And you know, he's uh, I remember me even at a, a we, I, last time I saw him. Well, perform is the wrong word but at larry bresen's memorial who was his longtime manager and he was my manager for a while and billy you know guys were doing some funny stuff too i mean it was sad but billy was yeah. just he's just there i mean the the awards and i guess he's not you know you don't see much of him anymore i don't i probably doesn't want to direct anymore i don't know he's got a movie coming out oh, with does? uh alan's why bell and i only know because i auditioned for it i didn't oh. get it uh, yeah. but, uh, it's funny. The, the, the part that I auditioned for was for a comedy writer, which is, I am oh. a comedy writer and I did not get it. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, yeah, they tell you, you, you know, you're too on the money. We get all that, you know? I yeah, yeah. 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 Send me uh, up like, for oh. a, Viet yeah, send me up for a Vietnamese boat person, you know? Uh, <laughs> exactly. yeah, it's I so was like, crazy. I did not get that. Yeah. yeah um, I know. Uh, I think they just went with somebody better looking. They yeah, they literally mean sometimes uh, we're looking for a Bobby Costanzo type. Not you, Bobby, but a Bobby Costanzo <laughs> type. But you know, you're not you're not a type. You're the real guy, and, and it's more true than not untrue. It's it's right. weird. Uh, it's a strange I'm, I'm, uh, strange business. And that was another thing. I think back in the old days, the guys kind of knew you, and they would offer jobs more. Yeah, you know, like Bochco and David Milch and those guys. You know, you. Uh, uh, and it's changed. It's changed. Yeah. You got to live with it. I mean, or you don't have to work. I'm still looking to work. Believe me, I still. No, I hear you. I'm re I'm ready to work. Yeah. Yeah. If I get if this Duppet thing takes off, man, you can play my dad. Okay. If you want to, if you want to, it's a virtual handshake. But that'll be that's the deal. All right, you got it. There's my yeah. hand. Oh, it's my wrong <laughs> hand. Left hand. Come the other way, can. I'll flip. I don't want to drop the phone. And my who knows where. No, yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm, I've been playing dads forever. Oh my goodness! No, oh, that's that's fantastic. I, I, I think the first series I did was it the first or the second? I did a series called Joe and Valerie, which oh. uh, with little obscure. I think we did eight episodes, and it was cashing in on the disco craze. You know, the Saturday Night Fever, which I was mm. one of my first speaking parts, wow. and they were trying to do disco sitcoms. And this one, uh, Paul Regina. Uh, was the lead, and I played his dad, even though I was about two years older than him. You know, I was, I was, I was bald back then, even. You know. So. Yeah, yeah. Some people just say, I, I know what you mean. I feel like I'll be playing somebody's disobedient son for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> that's so just that's the role. good. So you, yeah, you're getting into acting and all. Yeah, trying great. to. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know, the the thing that's hard for I, I think I've I've heard this uh, many. I've, I've taken acting classes and stuff, and it's always the same shit. They say comedians have a heart and i do i don't know if it's like an add thing sticking to the script sometimes it's like a word like a line i'll change it and they're like you can't change it you gotta leave yeah. it as the thing is whatever and i'm like oh my god you're right i'm so sorry but like it's it's how i actually talk naturally sometimes yeah. slips out into the thing and it's a it's something i gotta work on because it's it's but it's years of like doing stand-up and beating 
that out of you. Everything that's not. And there's also, you, you know, it, it, everybody's got these weird perceptions about people, you know, uh, you know, models. Sometimes, you know, there, there's a reason for it. But, it, you know, the idea that models are not good actress, actors or, right. you know, female, right. female, which is not completely true. And then, you know, look at Farrah Fawcett. Everybody thought she was just like some, you know, beautiful uh, window dressing. And then she did extremities and blew everyone off, the, you know, yeah. the feet. You never know with actors. They'll surprise you. And so many good, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 speaking of comedians, I remember years ago, I, uh, I saw a thing where uh, they had three classic roles being done by three comedians. Uh, let's see if I can remember who did what. Buddy Hackett, mm -hmm. Jonathan, Jonathan Winters, Ooh. and the other one. Um, I can't remember who the third one was, but Hackett did, uh, Winters did Willie Loman and Death of a Salesman. In other words, they did dramatic roles. Right. He was quite, he was quite good. And then wow. uh, Buddy ha Hackett did Cyrano, I think. No. You did Cyrano? Sure. I think so. That was kind of uh, crazy. That's hilarious, especially considering Buddy how dirty Hackett. Buddy yeah, was. Could you imagine? Yeah. But anyway, most mostly they were good. Um, yeah. A, a lot of times... Uh, the comedians, uh, you you get that smile when they're acting, where they're like sort of not completely committed to the character. They're almost grinning, like uh, mm. uh, not to point out, but I remember Gabe Carter would do that. He would always have oh. this, and I'm saying, you know, don't do that because right. Robin at the beginning would do that a little too. Robin Williams, who became a fabulous actor, of course. Yeah, but and he would do that in the beginning. He, yeah, I think he would sort of smile, and it would be like uh, maybe an embarrassment, like this really isn't me, because uh, you're playing somebody who's uptight or something. Maybe you have right. that issue to deal with. Yeah, of course. It's a it's a yeah. real mind fuck when you're yeah. when you're thinking yeah. about that because you, yeah. you like it is you're playing someone that isn't yeah. you, and you're just like. But the thing is, is that the feeling that they know it's not you. But if you just stay in yeah, character, yeah, nobody yeah. knows anything. But it's all it's all in my head the entire time. I'm like, yeah, oh, I mean, you, you know, you, yeah, you never should condescend to a character. You know, when you, like I played a lot of, uh, you know, sub morons with low IQs. But I tell people you got to be <laughs> smart to play a moron. And yeah, and uh, yeah, but exactly. Levinson said, but Levinson said, my friend Bobby Costanzo, he said, pretty bright guy, but he always plays, you know, idiots. But Every time he says a word over three syllables, he punches his hand and goes, that was fucking esoteric, you know, rather than <laughs> <laughs> that was just his thing on me. But uh, yeah, yeah. The trick is to, you know, do the character and not comment on it. And, right. you know, even if it's not you, it's you at the moment. I tell I tell other actors, one of the best things you do when you act is you bullshit yourself. You literally con yourself. And when you're doing it, there's a part of you that believes, you know, you are you are that construction worker or you are that, uh, 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 you know, maybe crooked lawyer or whoever. You, yeah. There's a part of you that at that moment sort of believes it, you know. Does it ever take you a while to shake off a role? Like, are you still – does that guy stay with you? No. For, no, no, that's good. No, not really. I'm not uh, – I guess I'm not that good where it, uh, you know, you know, there are some actors. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, there are some actors, you, you know, they say Christian Bale never drops character on the set. Right. But you know what? I can forgive it because, you know, that can be obnoxious and annoying sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Andy Kaufman was like that, uh, you know. Yeah. He was, yeah. you know, he was, he was like that. They, uh, you know the story about him when he was doing Taxi. He had two characters he played, and one of them was Latka. If you yep. watch the old Taxis, and the other one was Tony Clifton, the yep. obnoxious comedian. And when he when he uh, when he was Tony Clifton, he would be an asshole on the set to yeah. the point where they they got so annoyed at him they fired Tony Clifton. <laughs> he just he wouldn't break it. It's like Devito and Judd Hirsch are saying, "Come on, Andy, stop this, will you?" No, you know and. Uh, I, I remember once he worked as a uh, uh, a busboy at Jerry's Deli or a waiter, and he knew me and I knew him, but he wouldn't break character. And he, you know, uh, he would screw up, and I would yell at him. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> but you know, here's the thing: if somebody's really good, you can tolerate that. You know? Yeah, of course. Because you get the results. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah. Bale is like that, I guess. But no, I don't. Um, uh, 
you they know, say I, Jim Carrey's like that a little too when he was on set at sometimes, especially when he was playing uh -huh. Andy Kaufman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, when he played Andy, the Man in the Moon. That's right. Yeah, yeah. they said he was like. Yeah, that you know, like it, you know, if that's your thing, um, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, I mean, I, I am, um, I'm not anti-method. My, my, my big teacher was Mira Rostova. She's not as well known as some of the other ones, but to me, she worked for me. After I was at Strasbourg for a while, while I was in New York, and I studied with her, and she just I hooked into her thing. She was a uh, uh, she was a brilliant actress in uh, Russia, and then wow. came here wow. and did uh, Seagull, and the critics lambasted her, and she never went back on stage again and became a teacher. And uh, her thing was the imagination and. Uh, she was not a, a proponent of, you know, the method, and some people are great at it. I mean, like I say, I use I use people in life. I substitute. I listen to music sometimes to get me into a mood. Um, yeah. So therefore, I would say, you know, I'm a. I use the method. I think we all do in a way. I mean, we substitute experiences for parallel situations, whatever. Right. And, you know. Uh, yeah, and this is they being they having the ability to walk away from it or something like that. But yeah, they can, yeah. it is interesting to hear that. Like I always think the same thing too when I read about those guys that do that kind of stuff. Is I'm like, is there something wrong with me that I can't do that? But I'm just like, they just got a different. No, nah, but I mean, you're yeah, you're wired different. I mean, you're you're yeah. you know you're you're facile. You're a comedian. Um, you know, you're not gonna probably uh, like Pacino. I mean, I, I always think of Al. I mean, how. He, you He's know, amazing. I've never yeah. really, I've never gone to places like that, uh, right? That I could think of. I, I don't know if I could. I, I've played around with it here and there. I don't get cast in those roles, but, uh, right? You know, uh, right. you know, it's uh, there's a lot of talented people out there, and it, uh, it totally you know, is. You, you got to find your niche. You know, I mean, you know, my my great uh, gift, luck, whatever, my look, uh, which sort of gave me a, you know, a a leg up on a lot of people, but it's also the bane of my existence because it kind of it, it kind of puts me in that little compartmentalized area, which you know uh, I kid around sometimes. I go, I got great range. I go everywhere from Brooklyn to the Bronx, you know. But uh, <laughs> did you ever feel like you were, I, did yeah. you ever feel like you were competing with anybody in particular, like another actor around that time? Well, like my, anybody my, my 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 big nemesis, if you will, was a great friend of mine. And a uh, great actor. He passed away about three or four years ago. I'm John sorry, Polito. John oh, Polito. You I know who that is. He was great. He was fabulous. You know, in Friends Like These, uh, he played my, my arch rival. He had a couple of scenes. He was Rudy Patak. Mm -hmm. And he was so great, John. John was wonderful. I remember he came to the set, and my buddy Phil Messina wanted to do a two-shot of the both of us. Right. And he asked John to shave his mustache, which was his stock and trade. Right. And John, right. I can do a pretty good intent. Oh, sure, Phil. I got to shave my mustache and work for fucking scale <laughs> with the stand. But he was, you know, he was great about it. And he died too early. He died too early. He was wondering. He was really the guy that it was sort of he and I. I remember one time we went to the network mm -hmm. and I forgot what it was for. Maybe I selectively blocked it out because I didn't get it. But I remember my ex-agent, John Crosby, was the head of talent at ABC. And okay. it got down to me okay. and John. And they said, nice. so uh, So I told John, I guess that means he got the point. He goes, no, we can't decide. For, you know, uh, flip a coin in the air. The both of you are so great. I go, can you at least validate my parking and stop bullshitting me? Because I know I didn't get this. You know, and I didn't. <laughs> John got it. <laughs> wow. And do, so I, yeah. you know, we're almost uh, we're we're getting close to the okay, end. Here, yeah, so I want to ask yeah, you a couple okay. more questions. But sure. uh, so what do you, do you have? Like I know uh, like our friends like these, like you said. Do you have any other roles that like you loved that you always cherished that you liked being in? Just a good experience on set, movies, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, roles that I like a lot. Well, you know, my great thrills. The movie it didn't turn out great. Was I did a movie called The Light Ship with the great Robert Duvall? Um, oh, I don't think I've ever seen. Uh, that. Yeah, that yeah. That movie, uh, that was so exciting because th that whole early 80s was great. I got to play Ann Bancroft's husband and Fatso right okay. around then. And then I did the, the light ship with Duval. Mm -hmm. And how I got that was interesting. Bobby Duval had seen me in a three-part Hill Street Blues. Right. And he, he told his wife at that time, Gail Youngs, who was John Savage's sister, 
he told Gail okay. about uh, uh, about me, and uh, Gail knew Annie, my wife, and mm -hmm. Annie comes and tells me that Duval, you know, likes you a lot, and I think he's going to try to get you in this movie. And I went, yeah, I did the old, yeah, sure, Bobby Duval's going to fit in a yeah, yeah. And uh, I wound up getting in the movie, and Duval and I had a lot of fun together. We became great friends. He was, I do a pretty good Duval. He would go, uh, um, Casanzo, acting is like life. We got more time than we think. And he would, you know, we 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 would uh, we would argue about everything. About he said, "Who's the roughest guy in your neighborhood?" Mm -hmm. I go, "Wow, we had a lot of tough guys, Bobby. I'd maybe Sally Porter, Petey Carino was rough." Yeah. I want to see one of your goombas who's tougher than my friend Larry Elkins. He reached in, <laughs> reached in and ripped a man's clavicle out of his chest. I want to see one of your goombas do that. So wow. I had so much fun with Bobby, and, uh, you know, we'd argue about food and everything. He was great. He was a lot of fun. To, that was a memorable one. The movie, unfortunately, didn't turn out as well as we thought. Okay. Uh, I, I did, the thing with Bancroft was great. I loved doing that. With friends like these, as I said, those are highlights. Oh, sorry. Nope. Um, yeah, on stage, I recently did something that I'm really proud of called the Alamo. It's about a bar in Bay Ridge, and um, it's about change, the way the world is changing and how people are, you know, gentrification coming in and, mm -hmm. and you know, people having to abandon their old ideas. And I played a, a bitter uh, ex-cop um who was in love with the Spanish woman who owned the bar? Anyway, it was a beautiful piece, and uh, really loved doing that. When that's when awesome. As a matter of fact, I wanted to. I'm also uh, involved with a theater in Chicago. I haven't been there in a few years, though. That's why I even hesitate to say it. But my friend Jim Soltoris, who's a lawyer and a terrific actor, we've done a few plays out there. Where I direct, mm -hmm. I'm like the artistic director, and. Wow. Uh, yeah, but, you know, we move around. We've done a couple of plays, a couple of Neil Simon plays. We did a play which uh, it'd be fun to do with you. It's called uh, – uh, it's not called Enter Laughing. It's called um, – oh, gosh. I was just looking at a, an old resume of mine. I had it on there. Oh. But but it's about an old – a Borscht Belt uh, comedian, an old mm -hmm. guy like me, mm -hmm. who's like over the hill and a snotty young uh, writer, wise-ass – and we have the same agent, and he brings him over there, and he's trying to revive both our careers. And every time I go to tell a joke, this kid comes up with the punchline, and I want to kill him. And oh. uh, as a matter of fact, I call the punchline the snapper, which I, oh. I never heard oh. before. But, uh, yeah, this right. was called uh, Die Laughing or something like that. Oh, Jimmy. we got to do it now. We got to do yeah, it. We, we, yeah, you and I should look. I, I'll let you know what it is. But it's uh, it's it's not done very often. It's a really good play. Uh I remember they interviewed me on the local TV station and they asked me my five favorite comedians. Mm -hmm. And I think I came up with, and no, and by the way, you know, who I love now is Maniscalco. Oh, he's, he's fucking genius. He's I love brilliant. That guy. He's incredible. But this was way before him. So, mm -hmm. um, but back then I came up in no particular order with Rodney Mason, yeah. Pryor, Robin, and mm -hmm. who's my fifth guy? I uh, can't remember. Robin Pryor, Rodney Mason. Oh, Carlin. Those are oh, my Oh, yeah. Those, great. They, I, put the, I put those guys on Mount Rushmore. No, I was going to say but those are your Mount Rushmore. Rushmore. Yeah, I, I would put you. I haven't seen you yet, so I might, might have room for you. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm up there. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, Rodney, there's so. Can you, could you do a lot of impressions? Do you, do, do you have a Rodney one? Because I feel like everybody's got a Rodney impression. I tell you, my wife. <laughs> I looked at my wife. She looked at me. I said, I guess you can't think of anybody either. Yeah. <laughs> that was, my that mother, was perfect. My mother, she wouldn't breastfeed me, said she just wanted to be friends. You know, when I first <laughs> when I first came out when I first came out here, I went to the improv. I used to like to I love watching comedians and, mm -hmm. and Joey uh, Joey Ross, who was on Car fifty four, uh -huh. was a good friend a good friend of Rodney's. So he was up there, he wasn't great, but after the show, I saw Rodney and I went over to him and I said, hey, Rodney, great to meet you. I saw you. And he goes, you're Italian. You're going to get laid tonight. And I go, <laughs> I don't think so. This is before I got married. He goes, Jews, we go home with papers and the bagels. He said, Italian guys are always sending it home. You know, he didn't, he didn't stop. So. <laughs> oh, my you know, God. I mean, 
when you look at it, mm -hmm. he did a lot of old jokes, but I guess it was the way he delivered them. I mean, yes. it was just. They, there's nothing like a Rodney joke. It's like getting a piece of candy every time he tells yeah. you. It's like, oh, so good. You know what I mean? <laughs> so perfect. Yeah. yeah. And they're good. good. And he, he was so good to younger. I mean, I he's one of those dudes. I never, I wish I could have been around. I wish I was doing stand up at the time to meet him. Even actually, even if I wasn't doing it, I would have loved to have met him because yeah. he was so nice to younger comics. And uh, how about you know, Rick, Rick? Rickles was great too in his oh, own. Oh, Rickles. Way. Oh, my God. He's oh. another one. I, I have, you know, it's crazy. I don't know if you read them. There's so around the same time, Rickles came out with a book. So did Bob Newhart and Steve Martin's book on all three of them wrote like memoirs oh. about their lives and about stand up. And what's crazy is all three of them, I don't, this definitely wasn't intentional, but all three of them were in each other's books and they wow. were each, they were each around. It just blew my mind that they were like, that they were even around, you know, at the same time, but one was playing yeah. a bigger room than the other and they would go visit when they had a kid or backstage at a dressing room thing. It's just amazing. You know, you know, you know, it was another guy I spent a lot of time with. Uh, I did guys and dolls with Milton Berle. No way. Holy shit. Oh, what was he you know, let me tell you something. Did I got along <laughs> We did 13 weeks. We did, the, we did the Music Center, and then we did San Francisco at the Orpheum. I played Harry the Horse, and I had a ball with Milton. <laughs> Holy shit. He was, he was hot shit. Uh, unbelievable. Funny. Wow. Crazy, that's man. That's crazy, man. I don't know anybody, I, I, I don't know anybody who's worked with Milton, so that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that awesome, was dude. fun. Yeah, I used to go to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Friars Club with him. It was great. And uh, you know what's amazing? This is my definition of chutzpah. This mm. guy called. This kid calls up when we're in San Francisco. You ever work San Francisco? Yes. So what's that club? Uh, Holy kid, City you know, Zoo. You know Lerner. You know that guy Lerner. What's his last name? Um, oh, um, he's got the club. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, oh it's, shit. Um, fuck. He, it's Bobby, not... Bobby Slay Slayton used to be there a lot, but this guy was. Yes. Uh, I had I had uh, Slayton. I had Slayton on a couple weeks ago. He's hilarious. Slayton is a pisser. He's didn't he, he was did, didn't he didn't he marry uh, Brez, Larry Bresner's widow or he's with her? He they're I, I don't know if they're married, but I know they're he told that story. I don't know if they're I yeah, think they're they're dating, yeah. yeah. But I, they're I together. Slayton, yeah, Slayton every time he sees me, he cracks up, we laugh our ass off. But there was another guy, I think <laughs> Lenny Lerner had a comedy club up there, right up on Green Street up there, you know, in uh, yeah. Right near, right near the strip there and up. I swear anyway, to God, story, he was talking about it too. Yeah, so this guy Lerner calls up the the uh, the theater and uh, pretends he's Woody Allen and he wants to talk to Burl about getting seats for Guys and Dolls. Right. So, right. Uh, so Burl somehow gets on the phone, realizes he's bullshitting, but mm -hmm. admires the kid's chutzpah, gets mm -hmm. him a ticket, two tickets, front row, free. He invites us to his club later on, the cast. Mm -hmm. And 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 Milton does a half hour. Milton Burrow. Holy shit. And he gave us he gives us a check. He gives us a check. <laughs> I'm thinking, this kid, I I'm gonna expose him. I he's probably still around, but he gave us a check. Oh, I remember oh. we we had these like watered down drinks and like hot dogs made in one of those those the, the, those like pressure cookers your aunt used to have they were horrible right you well, well, a check and milton, milton paid the check and and you know what milton was great and i was no, i was actually nervous because you know this was kind of a a hip inside crowd doing a lot of drug jokes and shit but burl mm -hmm. funny funny is funny man yeah no funny he's, is funny yeah. yeah he he i always heard stories about yeah. him just crushing wherever he was the yeah. roasts any yeah, roast he yeah. was on, no matter what age yeah. he was on, oh, he was, he's the best. He's yeah. the best. He was, he's and he was. I remember he was. He had, and he had acting chops too, because he did an episode of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and he played yeah, the he guy. Did. It he that did. was powerful. That was a great. That was he a great did. role. He did. He did have, and he was great in a thing called Doyle Against the House. I think it was a uh, hmm. Twilight Zone episode. He was brilliant. Oh, Twilight anyway. Zone. I fucking love Twilight Zone. So good. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's wind yeah. it down. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I know. <laughs> No, no, we got off on a tangent. The only thing, uh, you know what? I, I was gonna say you got something coming out that I that I that I caught. I got a. It's I don't know if it's out yet. It's part of a trilogy called Dutch, but I just wanted to plug that for you too. Oh like, yeah, yeah, plug, yeah. Uh, it looks it, good. Uh, yeah, have you? I haven't seen it yet. They had some uh, showings in, out in Baldwin Hills. I couldn't get over there, but I've I've got to see it. We did it. Uh, 
uh, actually a couple of years ago, and then the, uh, the I think they replaced the lead, and we had to shoot another scene. Okay, last year. I, but thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I haven't seen I'm it, yet, but I saw the trailer. I have a feeling. Oh, the trailer looks good. Yeah, Phenomenal. I have a feeling it's going to be good. I got to see it. Yeah, um, yeah. that's well, it. And I'm yeah. I'm working on yeah. another script with somebody, but I don't know if that's going to come to fruition. Okay. Uh, okay. And he wants me to play detective in a kind of a uh, sort of like West Side Story. Uh, you know. Oh wow. Uh, a gang thing, but I don't know if that's going to develop yet. We'll see. That's I don't awesome. want to jinx, you know. Yeah, All right. no, I, I anyway. yeah thank yeah. you so, so much for coming. All right, on. John. This yeah, stay in touch. Yeah, Great we'll do. Talking. Absolutely. Great talking All right, to you. Buddy. Buddy. Thank Bye. you. Good talking yep. to you all. Okay, Take care. stay well. Stay safe. Right. You too, man. Dystopia tonight.